Hi there. In this video, I'm going to cover recursion. Uh, what I have here is a uh, small class in BlueJ. And the class has, besides the constructor, it has one method in it called recur, which takes in an integer. And the method consists of an if statement. This is our recursive stopping condition. Every recursive method needs a stopping condition. It's essential if the recursive method is going to work. We print out the value of y, then we make the recursive call, and we decrease y by 1. Um, now, assuming that the original parameter value was a positive number, decreasing that number by 1 assures that we will approach our stopping condition, which is a value of y equal to or less than 0. Right? If we did y plus 1 here, we'd be moving... Again, assuming that we started with a positive integer as a parameter, we'd be moving away from our stopping condition, and this thing would just go and go until um, the stack was overflowed and, and <coughs> the computer crashed, or the program crashed. After the recursive call, there's a single line of code. Now, there could be more, many things after that first recursive call. Uh, in many recursive methods, there are two recursive calls, or sometimes even more than two. Um, and at, when this version of the recursion is done, right, it, there are still things to do, in this case, this one line. So the computer has to have some way of keeping track of, of where it needs to go back to to finish up, and it uses a stack for this. So let's just take a quick look at SketchUp to see how this works. So here we have SketchUp, and uh, we've got our stack here, and our method, right? So <clears throat> what happens here? So we, let's say we call this thing with 5. Um, so 5 comes in, and it would output 5, and then it would, <clears throat> it would do the recursive call. Now, when it does the recursive call, it puts on um, onto the stack um, the information it needs to return um, and to reset up for finishing this version of the recursive call. So it knows sort of knows that it has to you know that continue right after this recursive this call to recur, and it needs to know what any local variables are equal to when it comes back. So it can reset up reset its state for that version of the recursion. So <clears throat> it stores. 5, which is the value of y for this version of the recursion. Okay, so now it goes on and makes the recursive call, and now we've got a second version of the recursion. And <clears throat> in that version, y is equal to 4. Right, so we haven't hit our stopping condition yet. We output 4. We put on the 4 onto the stack. Right? It's called pushing it onto the stack. And <clears throat> we continue doing this. And, right, we put 3 on. We put... Let's just zoom in a little here. Change our angle so it's easier to see. And we put 2 on. And then uh, we put 1 on. Now when y is equal to 1, uh, we call it with y minus 1, which is 0. That's our stopping condition, since there's nothing to do if y is equal to 0 or less than 0. Nothing happens. <clears throat> that version of the recursion finishes. So what happens at that point is the compiler <clears throat> or Java says, OK, um, is there anything on the stack that I need to finish up? And it sees, oh, OK. There's this version of the recursion on the stack where y is equal to 1. So let's go finish that up. So it comes back, and it continues up after the recursive call, because it's already done that, and it prints out 1. Right? Then it finished that, so it gets rid of it. So it pops it off the stack. Now it says, is there anything else on the stack? 2. So it comes back again right after that, prints out the 2, and so on, prints the 3. Oops, prints the 4, prints the 5, and we're done. <clears throat> the stack is empty. The 
method is finished. Okay? So let's go back and look at uh, this and uh, compile it. And I think I have a, where is it? There we go. <clears throat> so we make a new recursion and let's run it. And we'll run it with five. And there it is, five, four, three, two, one, right? That's sort of the things being put onto the stack. And then the recursion unwinds, right? The one comes off the stack, the two, three, four, and five, and we're done because there's nothing left on the stack. So that's um, that's how recursion works in, in a very sort of the simplest form of recursion. Um, if you ever want to print out <clears throat> numbers, both, uh, you know, backwards and then forwards, that's how you do it in recursion, okay? Um, that's it.